As a whole, the Sinnoh region in Pokemon Generation 4 is one of the most beloved gens of all time. However, it lacks a bit in the Department of Movesets and Variety in its Gym Leaders, so today we're gonna fix the Sinnoh Gym Leaders. This video was recommended by Oathkeeper Bry. If you guys want your ideas to be considered for future videos, please leave a comment below or join our Discord server that's in the description. My name is Jacob as always, and we upload daily Pokemon content, so please consider liking the video and subscribing as we're on the road to 100,000 subscribers by year's end. Before we go over and change all the teams, I want to lay the groundwork for what the rules are and what we're changing for the teams or movesets. Firstly, we must stick to the Sinnoh decks for Platinum. We are not allowed to add any Pokemon that's not usually in the normal games as they want to be as authentic to the normal games as possible. Secondly, we won't be adding any legendary Pokemon to any of the teams as well. Thirdly, I am not going to add any extra Pokemon that are teamed. So, if a gym leader had three Pokemon, they're only going to keep three Pokemon. But we can change the Pokemon they do have. Next up and lastly, we can add any move to any Pokemon as long as they're able to learn it via TM, Move Tutor, or Egg Move. Now that it is out of the way, let's move on to the first gym leader, Roar. The first gym leader we're going to go over is Rourke, and as you all know, he specializes in Rock-type Pokemon. Rourke's team is super underwhelming as he has two Pokemon that share the same type in Geodid and Onyx. Thus, right away, we're at least changing one, if not both of them, off his team. Since Rourke already has one of the Sinnoh Fossils, let's just give him the other one in Shialon, which will act as his new lead of the team with Stealth Rock, Iron Head, Rock Tomb, and Toxic. I'm making Shieldon hold an Orenberry since this is Gym 1. Rourke's second Pokemon is going to change from Onyx to Nosepass. Nigel Thornberry, I mean Nosepass, isn't the greatest replacement ever, but with the moves that Thunder Wave, Sandstorm, Rock Slide, and Torment, Nosepass can be really difficult and frustrating to knock out. I'll give the item Smooth Rock as well and make sure Stan stays up for Rourke's new ace from Pardos. Yes, I know I said I'm not going to change the ace of the team, but I never said I wouldn't evolve an ace to make it better, and that's what we're going to be doing with Rourke's ace. I understand Rampardos may be super difficult to deal with as early as Gym 1, but its moveset will be lessened to help deal with it as well as possible, and we're going to be changing a level cap from 14 to 18, so no matter what starter someone chooses, they'll have their second stage by then. Also, if Lance can have unevolved Dragonite, why can't Rourke do the same thing? Plus, Rourke's Kranidos evolved in the anime. Rampardos will hold a Focus Dash and have the moves Rock Slide, Headbutt, Endeavor, and Rock Polish. Therefore, not being able to hit a Geodude or Onyx super hard, and those are two Pokemon you can easily have access to by then as well. So to recap, Rourke's new squad is Shieldon, Nosepass, and his new ace, Rampardos. Gym 2 takes place in Eterna City, and Gardenia has the title of Grass-type Gym Leader. Grass-type is one of the worst types in the game, and Gardenia's team just isn't the most ideal either. Her team in and of itself isn't the worst with Turtwig, Charum, and Roserade, however the movesets and lack of coverage is concerning. It's all either grass or poison moves, thus I find it important for me to fix that. I want to keep the same Pokemon on her team, but the one tiny change I thought to make was evolving her Turtwig to Grottle. Turtwig evolves at 18, therefore the Pokemon always should have been Grottle here. Its new moveset is Sunny Day, Stealth Rock, Grass Knot, and Reflect, and is holding the Heat Rock to make Sun last as long as possible for Gardenia's Charum and Roserade respectively. Next up is Charum, and its moveset will change from Leech Seed, Safeguard, Grass Knot, and Magic Leaf to Growth, Leech Seed, Protect, and Grass Knot. Yes, the nuisances of Leech Seed and Protection addings can be annoying, but only having Grass Coverage makes Charum much, much easier to deal with, even if Charum has a Citrus Berry for recovery as well. Lastly, we have Gardenia's Ace, Roserade. Roserade's initial moveset of Grass Knot, Stun Sport, Magic Leaf, and Poison Sting, Poison Sting, has a lot to be desired here, especially due to Poison Freaking Sting. I just don't understand why Game Freak decided that was a good idea. Anyway, Roserade now has a move, Sunny Day, Weather Ball, Grass Knot, and Hidden Power Poison while holding a Miracle Seed for more power. Although not much has changed about Gardenia overall, she should be a much more potent gym leader with actual strategy. The third gym in Sinnoh takes place in Heart Home City, and it's ran by Fantina and her ghost-type Pokemon. At first glance, Fantina seems mostly strong, but there are objectively some sore spots like Haunter's moveset. Haunter is a special attacker, so why give it physical moves? I can sort of see the vision with Sucker Punch, but Shadow Claw? I can understand it's a TM she gives you, but she just should have been outright given a higher level Pokemon that are physical specimens rather than allowing her to be a third gym. Anyways, I digress. Let's fix this team. I know I said earlier I wasn't going to change any of the gym leader's ace Pokemon, but I truly believe in this case it needs to be done. Either it's the ace or the Shadow Claw TM you get after beating her, and this video is about making them better and more competitive, thus that's why I went this route instead. Fantina will still lead with her Dusko, but its moveset will be better because for this team, 
it is going to be extremely interesting. Duskowl now is able to learn the move Shadow Claw despite not previously being able to. Its new moveset is Trick Room, Memento, will o -Wisp, and Shadow Claw. Trick Room is there so it can set up for the rest of the team, and will hold the item Berry Juice since it has low HP. Her second Pokemon will be Duskowl's evolution, Dusclops. The theme of this team is Trick Room, so the slow nature of the Duskull family can be taken advantage of. Dusclops will be more annoying with its moveset of Substitute, Disable, Pain Split, and Shadow Claw while holding the leftovers. This makes it so one really has to think about how to defeat this super bulky Pokemon. Just be thankful there's no Eviolite in Gen 4. I'm sure many of you guys have probably been able to guess by now, but Fantina's new ace is indeed Dusnor. This Dusnor will be very offensive by holding the spell tag with the moves Trick Room, Shadow Claw, Sucker Punch, and Drain Punch. With these changes made to Fantina, I wholeheartedly believe she'd be a fun yet pretty challenging third gym leader to face. With three gyms down, we're onward to Veilstone City to see how we can change Maylene and her fighting type Pokemon. Maylene typically has Metatite, Machoke, and Lucario. Now, I'm only going to be changing one of the Pokemon from her team, that's removing Machoke and adding Toxicroak. I understand Krogan doesn't evolve until 37, but just like before, the same rules apply. She's close enough to level 37 anyway. Her lead Metatite will stay the same, but its moveset of Drain Punch, Confusion, Fake Out, and Rock Doom isn't the worst we've seen. However, there's one minor tweak I want to change, and that's replacing Confusion for Zen Headbutt since it's an egg move. It'll be holding the wide lens so it's better able to hit the more inaccurate moves. Maylene's second Pokemon is a previously mentioned Toxicroak. The Toad Sage will now have the moves Taunt, Drain Punch, Bulk Up, and Thunder Punch. And in combination with its Hell Black Sludge, it should be able to hold its own in this fight. Better have a ground type for not only the Toad, but her ace, Lucario, as well. Since Fantina's team lacks special attacks, I wanted to make Lucario mostly a special attacker while still keeping her team of Drain Punch too. Lucario will now hold the Shuka Berry to help with ground types and have the moves Calm Mind, Dark Pulse, Vacuum Wave, and Drain Punch. While Lucario is a mixed attacker, it should have no trouble dishing out hard hits on either side of the physical or special spectrum. Oh, oh, we're halfway there, and I'm not living on a prayer that Crash Awake's team has solid moves either. That was really bad, but nonetheless, it's funny. But anyway, we're on to Pastoria, let's, let's talk about the future pro wrestling team. His initial team of Gyarados, Quagsire, and Floatzel seems solid enough, and his Gyarados to help with Grass-type, and Quagsire to help with Electro-type, and Floatzel as its ace, but what if I said we can do you one better? Would you believe me? Doing better is exactly what we're going to do. Crasher Wake's lead is going to go from Gyarados to Gastrodon. Gastro is going to hold the Rando Berry to help with its 4 time grass weakness and have the moves Mirror Coat, Counter, Rain Dance, and Brine. Rain Dance will help set up Floatzel later. If you want to try to Oko this thing with any grass move, be warned because it may KO you back with either Counter or Mirror Coat. Secondly is Gyarados. I really wanted to give Gyarados Dragon Dance, but that 100% would have been a bit much, especially since its held item is the Wakan Berry for super effective electric moves. Gyarados' new moveset is Earthquake, Bounce, Waterfall, and Rain Dance. Again, Rain Dance is so its water moves will hit harder, but mostly it's there to help crash your wakes ace Floatzel. The new moveset for Floatzel is going to be Brine, Aqua Jet, Crunch, and Ice Punch. Thus, it's an all-out attacker. I was going to go easy on the player and give it a Mystic Water, but I'm in my Villain Arc, baby, so it's going to get the Life Orb to make all of those moves that much stronger. Have fun! With 5 out of the 8 gyms done, we're now going to talk about Rourke's dad, Byron, who loves Steel types and his gym is in Candlelave City. While Byron's team is an upgrade from Diamond and Pearl, the team of Magneton, Steelix, and Bastion could use some work. After looking over the entire Sinnoh Platinum decks, there aren't a lot of great options here. I was going to let him keep the same team, but only evolving Magneton to Magnezone in the process, but I thought of one better. So let's make his new theme and all of his Pokemon four times weak to ground. His new team consists of his lead, Magnezone, Probopass, and still his ace, Bastiodon. Magnezone will now hold the Shookaberry along with its moves of Thunderbolt, Flash Cannon, Hidden Power Grass, and Magnet Rise. It's sure to be problematic Pokemon as a lead. Magnet Rise is incredible, so you can't just click ground type moves back to back as it's almost certain to live one with a Shookaberry, and then it would be immune after it gets up Magnet Rise. Magnet Rise may have been on Magnezone's set, but it is not going to be on Probopass's set. Rather than giving Probopass a Shookaberry, let's give it a Choppleberry as it's quad weak to fighting too. The moves it'll have are Flash Cannon, Ancient Power, Earth Power, and Stealth Rock. I thought Byron having Probo Pass would be appropriate as his son Rourke has Nose Pass as well as a TM for Stealth Rock. I find it as a nice nod to lower and pretty clever myself. Lastly, we have Bastiodon. Rather than having a Shuka Berry or a Choppo Berry like the first two Pokemon, Bastiodon will have a Focus Sash because Sturdy does not work the same way as it does in today's day and age. It started that in Gen 5. So as long as you didn't get up hazards, it'll always be able to live one hit and potentially KO you back with one of its nearly signature moves, Metal Burst. Only the Aggron line in this game has it too. 
Bastiodon, other moves will be Flash Cannon, Stone Edge, and Toxic. Since Byron was a big joke of a gym leader, we need to make Candace not that big of a joke, except for when it comes to this. Candace, these nuts in your mouth! <laughs> I'm not sorry. Despite my silly jokes, let's actually dig into how we can make Candace's team a lot better. Firstly, she's not going to have a Sneasel at all. This is Gym 7, and the levels are into low to mid 40s, and I don't want to give her a Weavile due to Cyrus having that. Secondly, we're evolving her Pilot Swine into a Mammal Swine, and her new lead is going to be a Bomba Snow, in order to get that hail out right away. Speaking of her new lead, let's give a Bomba Snow of the moves Avalanche, Earthquake, Ice Shard, and Blizzard, while holding the Aka Berry so it should be able to live a fire hit. Next up will be her second Pokemon, Glaceon. Glaceon's going to be holding the Icy Rock with the moves Hail, Blizzard, Baton Pass, and Wish. We are giving Glaceon Hail just in case the Challenger brings some sort of weather themselves. Glaceon is basically just here to be a nuisance to the player. The next set is for Bry, who not only gave me the idea for this video, but Mamoswine also happens to be his favorite Pokemon. Plus, I am making Mamoswine hit as hard as possible as it can with the moves Ice Shard, Earthquake, Avalanche, and Rock Slide while holding the Choice Band. Pyloswine may have been easy to deal with in the past, but this Mamoswine will be anything but that. Last but not least, we have our Ace Frostlass still. I'm going to be choosing Violence, and not only am I going to let Frostlass keep double team, I'm going to give it the item Bright Powder, so hitting this frustrating Ghost Ice type is going to be insanely difficult. What can I say? This is Gym 7. It needs to be ramped up to 100. Frostlass's new moveset is Blizzard, Shadow Ball, and Power Fighting in order to smack Dark types relatively hard. From Sand, to Sun, to Trick Room, to Hard Hitting Fighters, to rain, to quad weak bonds, to hail, we're finally under the last and hopefully most difficult gym leader of them all, Volkner. The last battle will take place in Sunny Shore City versus an electric type. This will no longer be a singles battle, but rather a doubles battle with some of the most fun new sets ever. We will not be adding any extra Pokemon to Volkner's team, but we will be replacing a lot of them. Volkner now has two leads rather than one, and those two are World Champion Paterisu and Rotom Wash. Remember how I said I wouldn't use Legends? Yeah, well, Rotom Wash is not a legendary Pokemon so it fits the bill perfectly. Sadly, it's not electric water yet because that happens in Gen 5. Rotomosh will be holding a choice scarf and have the moves Thunder, Hydro Pump, Hidden Power Grass, and Trick. Thunder is there because Pachirisu will be its partner and have the moves Rain Dance, U-Turn, Follow Me, and Charm. Pachirisu didn't get Follow Me in Gen 4, but it still was a move back then, so I'm bending the rules just a tad since it's a double battle now. Pachirisu will hold the Focus Dash so it's always able to get Rain Dance up. Walkner's last two Pokemon will be Raichu and his Ace from Diamond and Pearl, Luxray. I changed his Ace mainly because of Intimidate is such a better ability for doubles than Motor Drive from Electivire. Raichu will be holding a Shooka Bear with the moves Fake Out, Helping Hand, Charge Beam, and Hidden Power Ice. This has really good coverage and can really help Luxray dish out more damage as well. Luxray will be all out offense while having the moves Ice Fang, Thunder Fang, Crunch, and Protect while holding the Life Orb for as much damage as possible. While we may not have been able to do more with this team, I overall really enjoy what we did with it, as well as making it a double battle. At the end of the day, I really think we improved at fixing the gym leaders of Sinnoh, and making them quite challenging but unique in the process, while at the same time trying to keep the nostalgia that is Generation 4 Pokemon. My name is Jacob as always, and I'd love if you subscribe, like the video, and let me know what your favorite Pokemon gym redone in the comments. Let me know of any fun ideas you have for future videos, and thanks for watching. I love you all. Peace.